This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Okay, so we got this little master built here. Got here, lady was complaining the top wasn't getting cold. Well, we popped it apart and look what we found. So it's completely froze up. We need to thaw it out. We need to figure out if we can get water in here. If not, we'll roll it out the front door of the store here and melt it outside. Because, I mean, over there's just the door. Pump sprayer would work, or garden has to be even better yet. Okay, we're going to rinse this back out here. So they can speed this up. It's the holiday season here. We're probably going to need this thing. So I'm going to go out of my way and try to do an extraordinary good job for them so they can have it, even though it's probably got a controller that's bad. We've got everything melted out now. You can see that... We just loosened up panels there. Just enough back panels there. Got all the crap out of the back. So here on the back side, you've got a pan. Obviously it's overfilling, but we're draining it into that drain right there. And should be able to get it running here in a second. Hopefully figure out what's going on with it. Okay, most of our water's drained out, so we should be able to tilt this back, drain out some of the pan. Got a good look at it here. You can see that contactor looks a little bit burnt. Not gonna say that has anything to do with it, but the uh, little honeycombs here, they were loose in there, so we gotta finish doing some adjustments on those, get those back into place. When I first got here, you push them back and they just fall back. They don't have a track that they're actually in, which like I said, the honeycomb there was hardly even in place when I first got here. Okay, got that all flattened back out. Let me see here what we've got to work with. Okay, so here's something that don't make a lot of sense. So there's only one temperature probe here, but when I looked at it earlier, I had T1, T2. And usually with these LAEs, they have a tendency to monitor discharge or return uh, and then the evaporator temperature. That way they know when they're done with the with uh, defrost. Well, you only see one probe going into there. And that probe comes up here to the top to the discharge right there. So where was the other one at? I just tore it all back apart to kind of see if I was missing something. Well, you only see two wires going to the fan. So right there's two. And that's not it. And then here's two fan, two wires for the lights. So there's only one, one, uh, so there's only one sensor in this thing. We don't know what exactly the deal is with this. All I've got is a LEE controller uh, manual for like true. This is the master built. Guess we'll throw it back together and we're gonna run it and see how it acts. So what I noticed was kind of come in like that, come up and back out falls into place in theory that works but look how it could flop backwards it's probably something missing this was broke when i got here so somebody's probably lost a piece or something that probably held it in there so what i end up doing is just shoving this one in like this and then just pulling it forward with my pliers so you can see it looks fine but it's open too i just washed it out you can see the led lighting right here but there's just nothing keeping it from falling back. So let's go ahead and go out there and run it and see what happens. See if it shuts off, see if it cycles on and off. Put a defrost, see how it acts like that. And then worst case scenario, we have to let it go. Maybe a freak thing, maybe it's a refrigerant issue. This is already about dry. Okay, we just got it plugged in. I'm feeling my discharge, it's pretty hot. I don't like to hold on to it. So I know that we're pumping some heat. Uh, we do have a suction port here on the back. Suction line's not really cold, per se. Let's see what we got going. Let's let this run for a bit. It might be just a touch low, I suppose. Anything's possible, never reaching temperature until it finally freezes up. Coming back around the front here, capillary tubes are already frosting up pretty significantly on those. Make sure the airflow is recirculating properly. Okay, we got refrigerant 404A. So coming down here. Negative seven degree evaporator. I'm gonna say we're just a touch low. I'll bet you. We're definitely not feeding anything extravaganza coming back here. Let's go grab a leak detector, see if we can find something. We're not horribly low because we are at 45 there. 
but that just seems awfully cold for a uh, cooler. I'm gonna speculate, but we're probably just touch low. What does this thing hold? Well, it's 20 ounces. Let's go ahead and kill power. That way we can let it build up pressure. Now, as always, you can get this at True Tech Tools, discount code SURVIVAL. Save yourself 8% at checkout on most items. So let's get back in here and take a peek at poo at this, see if we can find a leak. It's gotta be at least 70 degrees in here, and this thing's not running, and we're at 33 degrees, and we are on the 404 setting there. And I am not picking up any leaks. I'm about ready to recover the refrigerant charge and just weigh it all in fresh, and then we'll see where we're at. I have a feeling, like I said, that we've got a leak somewhere in here. We're going all up in here in the crevices, and I'm not getting anything at all. But we only we've got 75 pounds. That should be enough. Okay, went ahead and recovered the charge. It's the easiest way, especially when you're only talking 20 ounces. It's critically charged, so get everything zeroed out here. Let's throttle this in there and get her up to 20 ounces here. Slowly adding her in there. Um, this new bottles I've noticed just do not seem to open up like they used to. Nowadays it seems like it takes several turns to get them to open up. I don't know if any of you guys have noticed that or not, but we're just about there. We're going to say, let's stop here and take a peek. Let's see we're at a 15 ounce. But 15 ounces, normally you're going to run 10 to 15 degrees below what you're shooting for. Right here's 20 ounces. Where we're coming at. Okay, running. I like that one. We're running about a zero degree evaporator. Well, don't know what to tell you. We could have a TXV acting stupid. Very easily could be a TXV acting stupid. Check superheat, see what we got. Yeah, so we come right in here, where it's coming right out of the coil before it gets all con con uh, connected with the other ones, and see what kind of superheat we got. So let's go ahead and do it right there. Okay, we're down to 34 degrees pretty quick, like. If you noticed, our distributor tubes are not frosting up like they were the last time. I still believe that we had a charge issue. It may not have been very low. We are clamped on the suction there. Let's see what we got. Okay guys, you can see our superheat now. This finally came down. We are running about a 10 degree evaporator. Did it shut off? It may have shut off actually. Okay, so it came down to 29 degrees and shut off, so it's happy. Fan's running, that's about it. All right, it's running again. So we're holding right in there about 18 degrees super heat, which it's probably gonna drop here in a second once it starts running, but we're about 10 degree evaporator. This thing just swings all over the place. The 311 is your actual temperature, the EV is your actual evaporator temperature, so I mean it's hold right in there, you know, what I would figure they're gonna they're gonna give you a buffer area there to protect that compressor. Uh, we definitely run a negative 20 something degree of here like we were before. We're running uh, four. Jumping back to the control here, if you hit I, that's T1, it's one of the sensors, hit it, hold it 33 degrees, that's gonna be your discharge. T1's 33, T2. Oh, no, there's no T2. Okay, I swear I've seen T2. I'm so used to it just going T1. Yeah, it's not. We well, don't know. He hit it again. It says 72, and I thought that must be maybe an internal. Yeah, I wish I could find the manual for this, because I about bet you they got it set for um, defrost based on runtime, and every time they do that, it causes crap to freeze up. It's garbage. I'd 
rather have it do it every so many hours. I'll look through my tr uh, true manual, see if I can find it. Okay, kind of going off of some of the set point 32. They had it at 30. I just moved it to 32. Uh, defrost limit 55. And I'm gonna have to admit, guys, I just went back through and watched the video. So it's running pretty much the exact same pressures that it did before. And so I don't think our charge was low. That's probably why we didn't find a leak. Uh, I'm thinking we got mainly just setting issues, but maybe just a touch low, nothing major. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Try to do as much as you can. Try to get it nailed on the first trip. Sometimes it's always the easiest thing, but we're not flooding back. Uh, so I mean, yeah, they're dissatisfied. So we shut off at 32 that time. Yep, it did, so that is the set point. Oh, so that's gonna be a closer cycle point if I do that. You know, you gotta go below what you want when you're doing discharge temperature, so it lasted for how long off of 30? So maybe that'll give us a little more time. Let me go see what our defrost is first, and then we may switch it back or may not switch it back. We got some different things here for the uh, settings there, it tells you what they are. You can screenshot that if you'd like. And then here's another one. This is off of True's uh, site. And this is a LCD32, very similar. Now, some of the other settings that I've got, which are time or not time, are these back here. So yeah, DFN. Uh, none, TIA is time, and FRO, cumulative run time, I want TI. So look for DFN, we'll double check that. Let's go in there and look. So I can't find a DFN, I see a DFR. See there's the closest thing to a DFN we've got, but that ain't, it's a DFR. And if you hit it, it's six, that's how many times I'm pretty sure. DL1 is in defrost time, so DL1 is the end time, that's 50 degrees, we could take it up. Five more degrees to make sure that it's actually up there. That way we know we got a DTO. I don't know if I've got an abbreviation for that. All right, right there, DTO. That's set for 15 minutes, maximum defrost duration. 15 measly minutes. That's all you're gonna give me, it's 15. So we can take that up to maybe 20. That's your off cycle. I mean, that's five measly minutes, 15 minutes, I just, Let's try 20. And DTY, that is defrost type. DTY, I, off. And your options, DTY was fan, electric, gas, off. It should be off is fan, is that what I wrote there? Off equals fan, okay, so that one's fine. So yeah, this one right here is probably your closest thing to knowing what you got, DTY. Well, we went ahead and put it back down to 30 from the set point and uh, ended up uh, adding an extra five minutes to the defrost time, went for 20 minutes. Um, it's really hard to tell, I mean, it's barely froze. I'm gonna say, let's go with this, see how it runs and kind of go from there. All right, so we're gonna end the video like this again. This is the third video I've had to do it like this. A lot of these videos lately have been videos that have been sitting on the computer for a while. I haven't been doing a whole lot of service calls lately because we had some training that we had to go to. And just as the season progresses towards the end of the year, not a lot's going on or it's just things that just aren't really something I think you guys would be interested in seeing. What I ended up doing here was making these adjustments and I haven't had to go back since. This video was recorded at least probably four months ago, six months ago, something like that, and I've not had to return. Just making the adjustments on the defrost clock was the majority of the things we had going on. I may have just jumped the gun a little bit by going straight to the charge, but when you've had so many leaks on these systems over and over again because of the piss poor quality these people put into the machines, you kind of just get a uh, thing in your head that, you know, it's probably a leak. And with the saturated suction temperature being so low, all those things led me to that conclusion that the charge was probably low. So all those things kind of made sense in my mind at the time. So hopefully it did for you too. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. If you would, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.